What's up everyone, IS3 is finally here on Global. Let me know in the comments how your IS3 runs so far. And in this episode, finally, I'm going to be recommending some of the most picked and used operators for IS3. Now, there are definitely more than what I will offer that serves specific purposes, especially with proper relics. But for the sake of practice, I'll just put in the most core units, ones that you can consider for every run. And to be honest, that's how meta works, right? So let's get into it. So the way I break it down is that I'm going to introduce these tags that describe in which aspect an operator is good at. So starter is that they are good in the starting levels, mainly first and second floor. You can safely pick them in the starting three. But some of these starters, they could be falling off once you hit higher floors. Function means that they serve a specific purpose that is not damage. So healing, DP regen, but most notably are control and can be solution to a particular boss or level. Carry means that they can serve as the core damage dealer in your team and in a lot of scenarios. And ideally, you want to have at least one of them at E2 as you enter third floor. Supplement means that they are likely secondary pick in the class or you can consider picking them when you have excessive hope and the game keeps throwing the same voucher at you. Relic dependent doesn't mean an operator can do good without relics, but rather they can be significantly improved by certain relics or that they have a lot of relics that can be beneficial to them. Cost efficient is mostly a tag for lower rarities. It usually describes the operator as doing a serviceable or even outstanding job with just a relatively low hope cost. So now let's take a look at the meta in order of classes. Starting from guards, despite them being the number one class in IS-2, they are a lot weaker in IS-3. Most of them can hit aerial enemies, and the ones that do are usually stuck with dealing with the breeders and their offsprings. That said, there is someone who absolutely kept the guard voucher being a treasure at least the first two times, and it's no other than Winnard, undisputed MVP of IS-3. He is the number one damage dealer in any team, and he counters the breeder, which I explained in the last episode. Next, we have Gavio Alter. She is a newbie-friendly starter pick has decent damage while being able to block like a defender. The problem with her is that once you get into higher floors, she is very susceptible to the breeder who chips away her defense real fast, and her damage falls off fast afterwards as well. With attack speed, however, she can pull off what's called a pull interrupt trick towards some key enemies, but that's some advanced technique that we're not going to get into here. Skill 2, M3, and you're good to go with her. Neural Altar is a good secondary pick once you have secured Winner, and she's a pretty good damage core for the third ending boss. I recommend doing module level 1 and skill through skill 3 masteries if you haven't already. Now, Highmore is the free operator in IS3, and her IS only talent is actually quite good. She requires no operation, you just pull her down and you can pass all of the first floor levels, including emergencies, with no problem and that's achievable with E1. A really comfortable starter, skill 1 mastery is recommended. La Pluma is similar to Highmore, they both are picked as a starter, with her being better on damage and Highmore better on survival. There really isn't too much difference in earlier floors, but Highmore survives better later on, although both of them cannot serve as a carry in higher floors. Next, we have Vanguards. They are still not a highly demanded class. Usually, you only need one of them in your pocket. Fang, if you play the human-oriented squad, is still solid. For most map, her DP gen will suffice. Myrtle is a classic, but I only recommend her as a supplement if you play the guard Vanguard squad or the human-oriented squad. Otherwise, she causes 3 hope, and I'd much rather take Elysium. So I would rate Elysium for being the number one vanguard choice. He buffs snipers, and snipers are very important in IS-3. He has a lot of functionalities packed that can come to use in different maps. So for all these offers, he's really a cost-efficient choice. Contably is also a decent choice. She can do good damage or generate DP insanely fast if you get attack or attack speed relics. And you can pick her over Elysium with those relics. 
Psylocke is mostly used for supplement, picked usually in the end game. You can use her in the Shamla boss, but only when you have assembled all other necessary components. Onto defenders, so in IS3, blocking is pretty much the only job for defenders, so you don't spend hope on higher rarity ones that also just mostly block. Horn, however, is different. She is the only defender carry, has three versatile skills that with all C uses, has a long attack range that comes in handy, and she becomes stronger with a lot of relics. You can start the game using her skill too, and I don't know if you have noticed, but the standard boss arena looks like it was designed for her. If you have the resources, I recommend all her skills for mastery in the order of 3, 2, 1. Spot, he still stands strong. His healing is quite enough for early and is decently tanky. I'd say he is the only 3 star in IS3 who is justified enough for me to pick him for one hope. Norikon, he costs 0 hope and only needs 12 DP instead of 18 for the duplicate defenders. And in my experience, most of the time, it's enough to get you through the early stages. Just level him to 30, it's real easy. I'm gonna put in Heavy Rain here because there are not a lot of good choices for defenders and I recommend trying her when your vouchers overflows. She can protect your key damage operator in dangerous situations but do require a strong understanding of the maps. Just know that she's a good supplement for now. Now for supporters, they provide buffs or debuff the enemies who has insane stats on N15 and you will pick amongst them depending on your current team com, the relics you have, and the ending you're going after. Suzuran is again, mostly picked for the endgame. She's very crucial in being able to amplify the damage so you can evaporate the Shambla boss in one go. However, she's not much needed on the way and also does not have a good positioning with the standard boss. So that's the thing that kept her from being super good. Sculter is generally the best 6-star supporter pick. She can provide healing when there are no medics. Her inspiration can spread the buffs she received from the relics. Attack and defense boosts are both important in M15 because they make your DPS hit harder and the defenders tank better. I recommend all her skills in the order of 231. For buffers, I think the second incoming is Stainless. He can switch between mainly skill 1 and 3. Skill 1 buffs teammates and skill 3 to deal damage. He works best with marksmen, which he either buff or use them to operate his skill 3 turrets. But what I say is Stainless, especially skill 3, requires you to understand both the map and his mechanics well enough, so practices are needed. Gnosis is mostly for freeze CC in IS3. All the control related relics are his favorite. He's mostly used for CC against the final night boss. He's not very reliable on freezing off the UFOs because of the range. Only his skill 2 is needed and with enough relics, sometimes he's serviceable in Eve 1 as well. Link is mostly a starter, but again with summoners, you need to be an experienced user plus is familiar enough with the levels. I generally don't use her a lot, but I've seen walkthroughs that use her as the core in the first four floors. She also has some very good relics to work around. Shamale, if I were to pick supporters, the first choice would be either her or Sculter, depending on the hope I have. She is still the best debuffer in the game. The 50% attack and defense cutoff is insane for the stat sticks in N15. With some SP recovery relics, she can easily have permanent skill 2 to work with. Earth Spirit is a kind of niche one, so this is more of a little spotlight. With module level 3, her slow is super good, does 80% of slow coverage on a single enemy and 25 seconds of AOE slow with skill 2, so it's like a budget Suzuran or Mostima skill 3. If you need slow and happen to have Belter, have a try. Sniper is the key carry class in M15 IS3. From my experience, I will always have at least one of Pazyamka, Chain Altar, or Cruise Altar in my composition. Pazyamka, the key ranged DPS choice. The most crucial part of a kit is the typewriter. 
It gives great flexibility of her position, and oftentimes you see her doing the job of two people, which is very valuable in IS. Her typewriter also enjoys bobs from attack speed relics and summon relics. Chen Alter, on the other hand, fills in the AoE demand where Pazyamka is weaker at. It's possible to start using her, but you will need spot for the tank comp to stay alive until you have enough DP to deploy her. When you just couldn't get Muinar through the vouchers, you can pick her to summon. Exia, still good as always, but requires proficiency with her and the levels to time her skill 3. She's usually used around a support comp, so that mostly includes Waffering and Stainless, and maybe Shamale. I would say she's an advanced pick, but it's fun experimenting with her as a call. Now, on the Cruise Altar, she is so so good in IS3, and I would rank her as the number one non 6 star, no doubt. You can buff her similarly to Axia, and plus, she has the anti air stun measure that absolutely destroys the seaborne UFOs. The value she provides is being able to free up the need for Texas Altar, and you can spend it on other operators or later on Yato Altar. I recommend m 3 ing her skill 2 and get module to at least level 1, and definitely worth going up if you are an IS addict. Rosa is mostly a supplement pick. With the module she receives later, she can deal enormous damage to the breeders and UFO, as well as the standard boss, plus that she would prioritize hitting them. If you are building her from scratch, I would recommend her module level 3 first and foremost, then skill 2 mastery 3, and maybe skill 3 m 3 as well. Arato has a very specific purpose, and that is usually to stall the final night boss. Do you know that it needs to be done in combination with Mr. Nothing? She can also prioritize hitting UFOs and put them out of the air via sleep. You can put her to use with just skill 1, skill level 7. Now on to the medics, and honestly speaking, if you don't get at least one medic entering the third floor, you are likely screwed. So first of all, let's take a look at Cal. Usually you will pick her when the voucher just doesn't go your way and keep getting stops like medics, casters, supporters, vanguards, and you need to get someone who can hold lane. And you can still utilize her as a secondary healer, a lane holder, and M3 as a stun bomb later on. For Nightingale, she's a supplement pick towards the end game. I think some of you may have bumped into the map with two Pompeys, and it is a map that should be respected and worth getting an operator just to prepare for it when you have the hope. Talopsis is usually the standard healer pick in IS3. She has decent healing, SP aura, makes you suffer less from blood disorder rejection, and her skill 2 is perfect for some of the intense waves. I recommend her level 1 module, but over time, I think it's just worth it to get it to level 3 for how much she's picked for all the runs. Wolverine is mostly picked in a team built around a marksman damage core, mainly Exia or Cruise Altar. And when you pick Stainless for this comp, you can also buff him for the turret damage. Even when you don't need a buff, you can still use a skill 1 for decent healing. Whispering is a secondary healer, and sometimes picked over Telopsis if you are expecting to get into the Wonderland node, and potentially face the Frozen Monstrosity boss. She also does provide decent healing and a lingering healing effect that is unaffected by the minus 70% healing debuff. Her module level 1 is crucial for the self-sustain, just give her a try if you have built one. Now let's take a look at the casters. Obviously, they are extremely crippled by the high res environment, so there are generally two scenarios where you pick a caster, either when you have like 3 or more relics related to arts damage or casters, or when you pick them for function, for example, Mastima for slow, Lin for stun, and Ebonhold skill 2 when you have the glory pack. First of all, Golden Glow. If you keep getting caster voucher and you are about to end the third floor with no damage core, I think it's safe to pick her without much relics. She can strike from rather safe distance with skill 3, and she actually pairs well with Sculptor or attack speed relics. She is also one of the few ways to brute force kill the final knight if perma stall is not possible. 
Masima mostly used for her stalls with module level 3 and skill 3. She can buy time for key DPS skills to recycle, stall enemies like the Seaborn Reaper until they die, etc. Now the following two, I'm a little torn as to whether or not to even put them here. I'm gonna say they are the most optimal arts damage dealer behind Golden Glow, but I'm also sure not to pick them without any related relics. So Passenger usually picked in combination with his hand relic or the flame of the Inquisition relic. Ayaviela, picked for her hand relic, can help clear mobs in some level, but the main problem with both of them is that they are just no good towards the bosses regardless of their relics. Finally, we have Lin, who will likely come in two months or so. She doesn't rely a lot on relics and can be picked for uses in particular levels, whether that is to deal with the snails or some specific range enemies, or to be used as a stun bomb with a rather big range to shoot down the UFOs. She can become extremely durable with some survival based relics and mostly serves to function but not damage. To wrap things up, let's take a look at the specialists. They are the number one class in IS3 in my opinion because they've got both damage and function packed together. They are versatile, enjoy a large range of relics and unnecessary for a lot of situations. And I'm going to address the most picked members of the class here. So we have the two FRDs starting off with Texas. Her most notable performance of course is the anti-UFO capability. Although mainly doing arts damage, her AOE stun and damage is still extremely strong in M15. In CN, she's released one month after IS3, so you guys may not get it, but the game is vastly harder without her presence. I recommend her skill 3 mastery, then module level 1 plus depending on your addiction with IS, then skill 2 M3. Yato Alter is expected to come a few months later, but her impact is no joke. She's immune to status effect in skill 2 and 3, does burst damage and rotates very fast. Both of the skills have distinct applications in different maps. I think I've rarely used Texas skill 2 anymore after Yato Alter arrives, so that Texas could focus back on the control department. When she's here, I recommend you do skill 2 and skill 3 mastery and module level at least at level 1. Weedy, now if you have some experience with shifting mechanics, you will realize that she's pretty solid in M15 as well. Both the center boss and the Ishamla boss have holes where you can just push them off the edge. She also has good performance on the way. Just try starting with Weedy sometime, it's quite refreshing. All her skills are necessary though, and I recommend mastery in order of 3 to 2 to 1. The module and upgrades are optional until you want to push Mizuki off the map in the fourth ending as well. Mr. Nothing, like Arato, is a specialized solution for the final night boss. If you do not have control relics, you need to pair him with Arato for the stall. He can, however, solo perma stalls the final night after he reaches half HP. So if you want to challenge M15 final night, I'd say you keep him in your back pocket. E1 skill 2 level 7 is serviceable, but for stable control in all circumstances, I would recommend skill 2, mastery 2 plus, and module level 2 plus. Finally, a little spotlight for Ethan. He's very good since the introduction of his module, and attack speed relics can translate into a higher bind rate for the guy. Take a duplicate helmet guy for blocking and E2 Ethan can take you through the first two floors quite comfortably. You do need to get him a level 3 module and skill 2 mastery 3 though. That's my personal experience and recommendation for the N15 meta. You're always encouraged to try out different team comp, pick operators based on the relics you have and improvise upon that. And this list is definitely not all that viable in N15. That said, I hope this video helps you with your building, and I will see you in maybe some actual practices video later. Enjoy your runs.